Hello Gemini, this is your forecast for November 2023. Uh, we start out the month with most of the activity in Scorpio. So you can see here Sun, Mars, and Mercury are all in Scorpio as we begin the month here. Um, so Scorpio is your sixth house, right? So sixth house is definitely not the most exciting place to have all these planets. It has to do with what I call the maintenance of life, right? So it has to do with your health, your lifestyle, um, also finances to, to some extent. You know, how are you making money? You know, um, it's more having to do with like managing money and being thrifty and things like that. So definitely not the most exciting area of life, but definitely an important area. Right. So with Sun, Mars and Mercury all there, you may be focusing a lot more on your on your health or well-being, finances, etc. Making changes there. You may have new goals there in some kind of way. Um, there's just generally an overall like health and lifestyle kind of focus. OK. Um, the second area I want to look to is Venus. So Venus is still in Virgo as we begin this month, right? And Virgo is your fourth house. So Venus shows where the pleasure, where the abundance is. And with Venus still in the fourth sign from you, um, this means that you're kind of enjoying staying at home, enjoying, you know, enjoying what is already familiar to you, basically. So people that you already know very well locations that you're familiar with you know familiar comforts familiar pastimes etc that's still the source the area of enjoyment for you at the start of the month all right so that's generally what's going on and i, I want to give you some key dates of some developments for this month so the first one would be november 4th which we are already looking at um on november 4th saturn turns direct at zero degrees pisces okay and pisces is your 10th house so this is actually the most public house for you it has to do with your career and reputation among other things <clears throat> and basically what i've been describing is when you have a planet retrograde its energies are kind of offline their energies still of course affect us but they do in a more subdued and kind of convoluted way it's more spiritual it's more abstract it's more subtle right so when you have a planet like in this case saturn turning direct moving out of retrograde its energies are coming back online. Its energies are, are becoming more visceral in this case, you know, going forward from November 4th. Okay. And Saturn, of course, brings energy that is, you know, it challenges us. It delays us and it, it forces us to be very thorough and mature and responsible. Right. So basically let's, let's put it together. So Saturn turning direct in Pisces, which is your 10th house. This means that going forward from November 4th, you may be more authoritative in public or and or at work. And you may also have more of a need to be responsible, disciplined, um, dedicated, you know, to your work and, and to your reputation, whatever your role is in society. Um, this can be a little bit divisive. You may come across more serious. Um, so. So that's really advantageous if you are, you know, seeking more responsibility, if you're wanting to be more of a leader in public, right? However, of course, that's going to rub some people the wrong way if you are, I don't know, calling the shots more or showing that you are experienced saying, hey, you know, I know what I'm doing. You can listen to me, right? Uh, maybe you're not intending to do that in a confrontational way, but of course it's going to rub some people the wrong way. That's That's just the nature of it. You can't be somebody in the world without rubbing someone the wrong way you can't make a cake without cracking some eggs right so i'm not saying to go out and you know offend everyone i'm just saying that you know you may be seeking that greater level of responsibility and you know advocating yourself and although that may bring you to a higher level maybe more responsibility or something like that it can also be a little bit divisive you may be coming across a little bit more serious to others after november 4th you may not feel more serious or you know you may not be intending to come across that way but that's just how you are likely to be perceived after november 4th if that makes sense um, okay, and then going to November 8th, this is the date when Venus leaves Virgo and enters Libra. So I would be excited for this. I think this is a lot more fun. Um, you know, we talked about how Venus was in your sixth house. Yeah, that was great for, or excuse me, Venus was in your fourth house. Um, that was great for enjoying, you know, home and family and enjoying those familiar comforts, right? Um, now things get a little bit more exciting, a little bit more outgoing with Venus in Libra. Libra is your sister sign. It's another air sign, right? So Venus is now within a trine to Gemini. It's tr loosely trining whatever placements you have in Gemini, wherever they are. Venus is now moving toward a trine with those placements. Okay. So in other words, um, having Venus, which is a benefic, it's all about love, pleasure, abundance, desire, etc. 
having that planet agreeing with you, lining up with you with this trine is really advantageous. You may be a little bit more charismatic. Others are enjoying your company. And specifically, Venus is in your fifth house. So you may have a lot more pleasure, abundance, and success with your creative endeavors. Uh, what do you do for fun? What do you do to express yourself? You know, are you a creative person? This is that area that we're talking about where you may find more pleasure, abundance, desire, success, etc. Um, and it goes both ways. You are how you are experiencing more pleasure and desire in these areas and others may f find you more pleasurable more attractive as well as well as whatever you are creating however you are expressing yourself others will enjoy this type of dynamic from you as well so so it's really advantageous especially if you apply that to what we already talked about saturn direct you are coming across more disciplined more mature more authoritative but at the same time you know you're having this abundance and, and pleasure with your self-expression. So I think that combination is potentially very powerful for you, okay? All right, and then November 10th, only a couple of days later, we have Mercury change signs. So Mercury is going to leave Scorpio and enter Sagittarius on November 10th, right? Um, so we already talked about how Mercury's been in Scorpio. It's been indicating a lot of increased change, learning, communication, surrounding your lifestyle your health you know things like that um now when mercury enters sagittarius uh the dynamic of course changes you know sagittarius is your seventh house it's your opposing sign right so when we have planets such as mercury there that indicates increased activity for you with your relationships with other other people in general any kind of relationships but specifically uh partnerships as well so if you have a current relationship or any kind of partner or best friend or whatever it is um you know as well as just all relationships to some extent as well uh mercury in this area shows increased communication so you know more talking more talking more listening more learning in those areas as well as you know wherever mercury is there tends to be a busyness as well so you may be more busy with your relationships okay um so i would say that's exciting generally speaking uh, we're gonna see mercury mars and then the sun enter uh, Sagittarius and as they do your life may get a little bit more fun and outgoing and exciting you know because those planets will be one by one they'll be um, energizing that seventh house of relationships okay <clears throat> okay and then moving forward to November 13th I wanted to talk about this day briefly because there is a new moon at 20 degrees Scorpio okay and it's conjunct Mars for that matter so again, there's still this increased activity in your sixth house of Scorpio. So again, you know, this could be a time for reevaluating your intentions with your your health, your lifestyle, your your well-being, mental health, physical health. Um, also, again, like budgeting, things like that. You know, it's the maintenance of life. Yeah, it's not, you know, the most sexy thing to talk about. Um, but this is, you know, a very valuable area of life. This is kind of, in a way, it's sort of the foundation of many parts of your life right so with this new moon here i always say with new moons yes it is a new beginning potentially but it's not a new beginning in the sense that um you know this is the time where you plant the seed this is the very beginning right so it's not necessarily the best time for like launching you know completely changing your life or starting a completely new diet or something like that this is more the time to be brainstorming and kind of you know reevaluating your intentions reevaluating you know am i truly healthy um is there anything i could do differently you know and just what are your intentions i want to be healthier i want to be happier i want to have more money whatever it is for you right um now is the time to reevaluate those intentions and then you may come across come up with you know new goals new new intentions new plans and then um you know the best time to launch you know and execute some kind of new plan like this would actually be one week later with the quarter moon on the 20th of november okay but now is the time for kind of seeing you know what are your intentions is there room for improvement with your lifestyle your health etc all right and then jumping forward to november 22nd this is the day where sun leaves scorpio and enters sagittarius so again like i was saying earlier i do think this represents kind of a more exciting time with planets entering your opposing sign of sagittarius um it in it increases the activity in, li in your life in general, but specifically with those relationships. Um, when you have planets lining up in your seventh house like this, 
it basically means you're kind of living vicariously through your partnerships, through your relationships. Okay, so with Sun and Mercury now both in Sagittarius, the spotlight is not really on you. You know, there's no planets in Gemini. Um, if anything, the focus is all the way across from you. So the focus is not on you directly. It's more on the people in your life. So the people in your life you may find are busier now. There's more going on with them. And so you you are busier through them. You are living vicariously, if that makes sense, to some extent. Um, you're busier through them. And you may enjoy those relationships. You may have more activity in your life but it's having to do with those people in your life those relationships does that make sense um so it's kind of a mixed bag and i would say this is more exciting um than the previous several weeks however uh one thing i did want to mention too when you have planets opposing your sign just like it sounds like they're opposing you they're kind of challenging you so as we go forward from november 22nd with mercury and now the sun in sagittarius you may feel that you're kind of offbeat you know yes you're enjoying your relationships and there's more activity there but at the same time going forward you may feel like you're kind of on a different page from everyone else you may feel that others are kind of opposing you there's some kind of tension there so so it's a mixed bag on the one hand there's more activity maybe more fun more engagement with your relationships but on the other hand you kind of feel like the world is slightly against you in a way if that makes sense so i just want to put that out there just so you are aware of that all right and jumping ahead again just a couple days to november 24th this is the day where mars joins mercury and the sun in sagittarius and so uh going off of that that tangent that i was just talking about you know with planets opposing you feeling that you're kind of on the wrong you know on a different page from everyone else feeling a bit of awkwardness or tension uh that will increase with mars in sagittarius because mars mars is warrior energy right it's fighting energy it's aggressive it's irritable so that can bring a little bit of irritability or aggressiveness or com competitiveness as well um with your relationships and again this applies to any relationship you have but especially those partnerships those one-on-one -on -one, uh, strong one-on-one -on -one partnerships uh, that's where you'll you're having a lot of activity right now much of that may be good may be fun may be engaging um, but again, there's probably going to be some kind of tension in there as well. Some kind of irritability or competitiveness. This isn't all bad. Uh, Mars, yes, it's a malefic. It's kind of a troublemaker. But it also brings about like sexual energy as well. It brings about um, drive and ambition. So in other words, yes, there may be more tension going forward with your relationships. But with Mars in your seventh house now, you may also have more drive, more desire with your relationships as well. So again it's kind of a kind of a mixed bag with mars there but i i just want to finish this thread this thought by saying um you know again we've got mercury sun and mars all in the seventh house for you that's definitely the biggest focus the focus is on your relationship so yeah i would be really curious to see what is going on with those people in your life probably a lot probably more than before for sure and then the last thing I want to cover today is uh, Monday, November 27th. There is a full moon that will happen in your sign at four degrees Gemini. So that that's a big deal, right? Having a full moon in your sign usually happens to us only once a year. Usually um, in, it's got to be in Sagittarius season, right? So around this time of year, usually once a year, you get a full moon in your sign. So basically now, uh, yes. So on the one hand, the focus is still on relationships, right? Because an opposition... A full moon is an opposition, is what I meant to say. Uh, the moon, it will be at four degrees Gemini, opposing the sun at four degrees Sagittarius. So it's, yes, it is mostly about Gemini. So, you know, the spotlight's on you for this full moon. It, it is largely about you. But at the same time, it's also about Sagittarius. So we're still bringing in these themes of your relationships. How are you working with other people? You know, are you playing nice with others? Um, you know, what's the nature of your relationships? that is very much in the forefront for this full moon but the difference is the the spotlight's also on gemini you know very much literally so the sun is shining a light on this full moon illuminating it um so in other words you know this full moon will be dramatic just like any other full moon but the difference is you're going to be directly involved with this full moon especially if you have placements right around four degrees gemini um you may experience a big culmination you may experience some drama some ups and downs increased activity in general um you know on the one hand this may be a great kind of party energy you know um, both Sagittarius and gemini love a good party and that's where the focus is so 
Uh, maybe a great time for enjoying yourself, doing something fun today. But on the other hand, it may be chaotic. It may be very busy, very eventful, very dramatic. So, so I would say, depending on your personality, you may want to do something fun or, or productive today, but in a way that is maybe cautious and not too out there um, because, you know, shit can hit the fan, so to speak, when we have a full moon like this, for sure. Okay, and that's all I wanted to say for um, this forecast. I'll, actually, uh, one last thing. I want to just conclude this by saying, you know, like mo most months, we really conclude the month with v a vastly different setup than what we began the month with, right? When we began the month, uh, Sun, Mercury, and Mars were all in Scorpio, and Venus was in Virgo. So, that you know, they're much heavier energies. Uh, we end the month with Sun, Mercury, and Mars in Sagittarius, and Venus in Libra. So... I definitely think the beginning of the month will be very heavy for you, you know, compared to the end of the month. By the end, you know, you're loosening up a bit, you're having more fun, you're more active, maybe more social, there's more activity with with uh, your relationships and those that are close to you. So generally speaking, I do think it's going to be an easier, kind of looser, more active time for you by the end of the month compared to the beginning, which was a little heavier. So, so I do think that's good. You know, you are Gemini, you like to keep it a little little light and kind of fun right so so i think that's definitely good news for you um okay but thanks for watching and have a great month and i'll see you later